from Vibriosis, brought to you by Leading Sheep and the Livestock Biosecurity Network. My name's Sarah Jane, I'm the Regional Manager for LBN in Northern Australia. Vibriosis, caused by the bacteria Campylobacter, therefore also known as Campylobacteriosis, um, is, occurs in both cattle and sheep. In cattle, vibriosis is a venereal disease. The bacteria are found in the bull, in semen, the penis and the prepuce, and in cows it's found throughout the entire reproductive tract. The bacteria is spread by sexual activity or through artificial insemination if hygiene practices are poor. In sheep, the disease is a little bit different. It's generally spread through ingestion of the bacteria, not venereally, and is picked up from grazing pastures or drinking water that's contaminated by faeces, placental or aborted material from infected animals. While the bacteria will die quickly in a dry environment, they survive much longer in cool, moist conditions. So we see it much more in Tasmania and Southern Australia and also in New Zealand. An abortion onto moist ground around a watering point or soak area may rapidly spread disease to the rest of the sheep flock. The increased length of survival of Campylobacteria in the cool, moist conditions explains why winter and spring lambing flocks are most at risk. Although there are generally no clinical signs associated with an infected bull, in cows, the disease has major potential for productivity impacts through abortion and infertility. In a naive herd, or a herd that hasn't been exposed before, conception rates can drop to as low as 40%. Once exposure occurs, you will develop some immunity in cows and heifers, but reinfection is possible as immunity wanes. And often permanent infertility in up to 10% of females can occur through uterine infections. Ovine campylobacteria, which is also known as ovine vibriosis or epidemic abortion of sheep, causes epidemics of abortions, so it's a very apt name. Susceptible ewes generally come into contact with the campybacteria in contaminated food or water. The bacteria enters the bloodstream and then passes to the uterus where they may multiply and infect the placental membrane. Abortion then occurs one to three weeks after the infection. Infected ewes that go on to deliver full-term lambs may have a poor milk supply, which further contributes to weak lambs and an increase in perinatal death. Abortion rates as a result of uh, Campylobacter infection can range from 5 and up to 50%. And then further production losses can also occur associated with ewes that have uterine infections that may end up dying of this. A flock in a cool and moist environment where there's a high number of abortions can occurring can exacerbate the potential for contamination on the pasture. And predators in the area can further spread aborted materials placental material or dead land, which can potentiate the infection further. A sheep flock can also become infected through the introduction of carrier animals. So these are animals where the bacteria is persistent in the intestines and is being shed in the faeces, which contaminates the pasture and potentially the water supply as well. In cattle, ideally prevention is all about vaccination. There are five options that range from no vaccination to vaccinating all bulls, heifers and cows in high value herds. Vaccination is an initial two shot course, four to six weeks apart, and then a yearly booster after that. Ensuring new bulls are vaccinated and fully vaccinated prior to arriving on your property is the best by security practice. And this can be supported by the vaccination declarations that are found on cattle health statements. Vibrio is also one of the vaccines that will cause a vaccination lump in cattle. So quite often you'll notice bulls that are brought in or cows will have a lump where they've been vaccinated. Culling older bulls also will help reduce the risk of passing on infection to heifers, which perpetuates the cycle, particularly in unvaccinated herds. In a herd where Vibrio is actually present, eradication is possible um, and although we're not going to discuss this today, there's a fact sheet available that we can provide to you in the resources. If I can just draw your attention to some information that's been provided by the most recent MLA study into disease prioritisation for cattle in Australia, you'll see two diseases there, botulism and vibriosis, um, are both covered as being diseases of paramount concern. 
botulism and vibriosis both have associated with them a prevention and a production cost. You can see in vibriosis in particular, the prevention cost or the cost of vaccination and biosecurity is very low when you compare with the production cost or the losses associated with the disease. So it is one preventable disease where cost benefit analysis indicates that vaccination is very beneficial. Vaccination in sheep. The vaccination strategies for sheep include vaccinating your maiden ewes, vaccinating your ewe lamb if you're going to keep them and join them, um, or an annual booster to adult ewes and ewe lambs on stud properties. However, in a commercial enterprise, this is likely to be uneconomical. The vaccination is similar to cattle in that initially you have two doses, four to six weeks apart pre-joining, and then a yearly booster, particularly in uh, your stud animals. Prevention strategies for preventing vibriosis in sheep include running maiden ewes with old ewes before mating, and this gives them opportunity for exposure through eating contaminated material or exposure to the gut bacteria as it spreads, protecting the water supplies from contamination so suggestion is to use reticulated water rather than dams or springs that may become contaminated through feces, placental material or aborted material. Um, if you're using troughs, make sure they're cleaned regularly in case predators may have spread bits and pieces of contaminated material into the trough. Undertaking biosecurity measures for your introduced animals, such as making sure pre-purchased pre vaccinations have been undertaken undertaking induction protocols such as quarantine and also predator control is an important one. You can also undertake mixing of mobs pre-joining to help with exposure. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at sjwilson at lbn.org.au and I've provided some resources for vaccination from Making More From Sheep, MLA and Future Beef if you need them. Thank you very much for listening to this webinar on vibriosis and if you have any questions, please get in contact.